Hi guys, Steve here, and on this video I'm going to show you my updated base. If you've not seen it before, you can see how my base originally looks here. It took me months to build by myself. Now that I'm playing with other people, you can see how I've expanded and improved it. I just wait for everything to render in. Ok, we have the updated base that I'll be mainly concentrating on, but also a large structure to the right. Try and ignore that for now, because I'll be showing you that at the end. Let's start with the outer defences. I've built these plant turret rows to kill any wild dinosaurs approaching a base. These outer ones are on long range and target all. They're also to stop people kiting Alpha Rexes into my base. The spikes at the bottom to stop people on Gigas munching through them. The front gateway is bottlenecked with a wall of pillars. It allows only one big dinosaur in and out at a time. A raiding tribe could bring many Gigas to attack you with, but if you're sitting in the entrance with your Giga, you'll only have to fight one after another. It looks to attackers that they could just walk in there, and it's meant to. If they got to that entrance, the plant turrets each side would slaughter them. The Brontos look like an easy kill as well, and that's their purpose, to delay the raiders in attacking them, while the turret plants kill their attackers. Down the right side we'd have another bottled neck entrance. I've put a stone pillars there for positioning, but then we got more members and started work on the structure to the right. I would have extra rows of plant turrets boxed in behind those pillars. Again just have a narrow entrance that's heavily defended, so any raiders would get attacked both sides. I'll do a flyabout so you can see what's changed on the base from the outside. The right side remains the same, and I have the metal behemoth gate as extra shielding on a narrow slope. The spikes at the back are unchanged to stop people landing, and the main building now is twice the height. At the back we have two turrets at the bottom with the next plant to slow them down, two turrets in the middle and two at the top. And on the roof rows of X-plants to push dinosaurs to the side and extra turrets on the battle quetzals depending on how many we've got there. The spikes at the side are just to stop people flying in there. stone behemoth gate for the back door, which I should upgrade to metal. Those two original turrets still cover this side. Dinosaur gates to stop Gigas getting up there and destroying X plants that be shooting at them. Bottom six are a bit close to the gates. Plus you've got house turrets that be shooting down at any raiders. The pillar wall goes all the way up to the cliff, and all of them on the base have been raised now to stop Gigas climbing over them. And this is a good example of why you need an anti-wild dinosaur defence. The new addition to the base is this second guard tower. It's a clone of the first one, but with a different base as it's not on flat ground. Again, it's in its own defence cell, so even if the other structures were destroyed, it would still work on its own as a standalone base. Because I've got room, I'd put another row of plant turrets around the bottom. And then that brings us back to the front entrance again. I'll show you my defence towers for those of you who haven't seen that video, plus they've changed slightly and their mechanic has been made stronger now that there's two of them. Oh, and for everyone who commented that you don't need water for large crop plots, nah! I was right, I'd foresaw that as soon as they'd been put in. 
pillar wall is a bit close to the plants now the gig has been put in the game, but they'll do, as I wasn't going to destroy and redo them. The tower foundations are 3x3, three three. and at the base you have one cube square rooms, so even if a large section of the bottom has been destroyed, the cube design will stop the tower from being demolished. If you want to see a more detailed explanation of why I designed a tower like this, you can click this link. At each corner we have the pillars going up to the top section, then we end up back where we started. Up the ladder you have room for a small living quarters. I did have a squatter called Captain Scurvy living here, but he doesn't play anymore. Slacker. His dodo pirate flag's good. It's two wall tiles high, so you can have large storage boxes here. And we can also use it to spawn here. We go through the central door, and this ladder takes us up to the top section. I made this deeper since the last video, as I wanted to put large storage boxes in here. Every side has sniper windows. You need to put beds in here to spawn at if you're attacked. Then you can take your spare equipment out of the large storage boxes. You want to make sure you're covering every angle, as they won't be able to attack if you keep shooting them in the back. If raiders manage to kill all the plants, then start attacking a tower from below, all I have to do is open up the floor hatch, then shoot them in the top of the head. and I've got one of these at each side. This floor's done, so let's go to the next. This is a room where four man turrets would go, one in each corner. We haven't had any wars since Sons of Alhalla tried to raid me, so I've still not got around to putting them in yet. Again, each side has a window for sniping. Then when you're attacked, you can open up the corner doors and shoot down at the raiders in your man turrets. Being in the corner, each turret can cover two sides. And with the other turret being manned, you can have two turrets firing at one side. The new addition to the tower is a central platform. This is two wall tiles high and contains a tower's generator. You could have auto turrets on the roof, but I also thought if I have a doors open, somebody might try and fly in on the bird. So put turrets on top of that platform, but if anyone does get it, they'll cover you. That's this tower done, so let's move to the next. Close all the doors properly later. And that's the tower again from underneath. You only really need one Bronto to get all your berries and thatch. I was levelling up these to breed battle Brontos. They're also a juicy target for any raiders to waste their time on, while my plants and turrets kill them. Thank you. 
The left side of the base was vulnerable, so I built this new tower to strengthen it. The top section is a clone of the first, but the base is different as the ground was uneven, so I couldn't put the 3x3 three three foundations down. This is a one foundation central column, with pillar columns going down to the ground surrounding it. There's one entrance to the centre. Then we go up the ladder again. It's the same as the first tower, so I'll quickly rush through it. Sniper windows again. and a match in central platform. This time however, because you have two towers, if you angle them correctly you can have them working in tandem and covering each other. So if raiders are attacking the front tower, someone could man the turret here and shoot at everyone trying to get in that tower, and vice versa. You would need a minimum of three towers to cover each other, but preferably four surrounding your main base. And again you have the hatches to shoot down at people. That's the towers done. With the inner pillar wall surrounding the main house, there's only one way in from the front. I didn't want to put a gateway here, as that would give you the same problem as building normal walls, but people can hide behind them. So instead, I came up with the idea of a gateway blocker. I built an armoured wall on the back of a penis horse, and put spikes at the top back in case anything tries to chomp on it. When you want to move your dinosaurs in and out, just simply move the horse out of the way, and that gives me access to the dino pit. Now I can move the Carnos out, after I've moved the Brontos. Then when you want to block it up again, simply reverse the penis horse back into the gateway. Well, you have to admit, it looks a bit like one. <laughs> And that should keep my dino pit safe. Down the left hand side we still have a row of X plants and pillars. Again the pillars are a bit close to the plants now that the gig is in, but I wasn't going to waste all that metal to redo them. I extended the pillars a bit so it goes right off the end of a cliff now. Pardon me? I've still got the water tanks here supplying the irrigation system, so I was prepared now for changing it so the plants need water. Use plants at the end, shoot down the back. If there was a raiding force out the front, then I could take the back exit to sneak behind them. Those gates would really need to be metal behemoth, as the stone ones are a bit weak. We have two trays of X plants covering the back, as well as the ones at the top sides. Our front row of X plants. And this cleared front area is where we land Quetzals. The main house is now twice as high, and all the turrets are on target player only. The metal behemoth gate still guards the shallowest slope, as this would be the main side I'd get attacked from. 
and the plants in the pillar walls down the right hand side remains the same. It's just got this new structure mixed in with it. I've removed all the spikes from the front, because they were a bit useless and to be honest a bit of a pain. Sometimes when I tried to close the doors above, I fell off my bird and into the spikes, so I've replaced them with X-plans. These turrets shoot down below, as well as the auto turrets on the house. And you need some X-plans to target all in case somebody drops dinos into your base to kill your passive ones. I keep some of the top carnos in here for breeding, because it's our safest base. We've just not been levelled up that much. A lot of you ask why I don't use any key commands, like T for transfer or O to drop. Well that's because on this server we get terrible server lag. Look where I am now. And we're back down into the pit again. I usually try and cut this out so you don't notice it in the videos. If I were to use TNO, I would have transferred or dropped loads of items I didn't want to. And this happens all the time. I've tried other servers, but this one's by far the worst for lag. I'll stand on a gateway bridge so you can see the view from the front door. Once you get the Giga, you'll only use that to farm meat, so the other carnivores don't get used much. Okay, let's go inside. I'll just switch your name tags off. We now have auto turrets guarding the main entrance. I thought it would be more effective at stopping raiders than an extra door, and the side wall's been removed to create a passageway. The left remains virtually the same. You still have a hatchway up, but this corner wall now is double thick. We have the same sniper room that you saw in my raid video. So I can still shoot out the front. And down the side. Even though the wall's been removed, the sniper den remains, it's just floating now. So I can still shoot out from this side. And down at any raiders trying to get in. This was my Dimorph enclosure, but since I've been nerfed I don't use them anymore, so I'll show you what I've converted it to instead. I can open these dino doors, and that leads to a shaft going to the top levels of the base. That's where the internal bird hangar is. From here we also have a door leading out to the front. so I can exit or enter from either of these doorways. And this middle door is so I can move the birds from upstairs to down here without being seen and back again. I'll show you how I do that when I get up there. But first we're going to look at the ground floor. The maze down here mostly remains the same. But now, under the main doorway, I've reinforced this entire section with one cube squares. When I left my base to be attacked, they took out my main doorways by blowing up everything underneath. Now it's many times harder to do, now everything's cubed off. This maze area past the cube front remains the same. The 
the supporting pillars are to reinforce everything. The front right section still has a few beds, which I don't spawn at. But these four cubes have been changed to a garden, so I can grow the four vegetables I need to make kibble. This section's in the air, so the maze here was fairly pointless, and I decided to turn it into something I could use. Ok, that's the defensive front done, so let's have a look inside. This has changed quite a bit, but still remains the same size. We have the dung beetles aligned up on the left to make the fertiliser for other plants. I keep only the essential dinosaurs I need here, and still the rest at the other base. The side shelf here is to store birds on. All you do is fly in, Land on the shelf and dismount. And that saves the birds from cluttering up the ground area. For the beetles, the caging system is easy to do than letting them run around. You know which ones you've done and it's easy to fill them up and empty. I've got storage boxes at the back but I keep all my excess fertiliser in dodos. The scorpion's on neutral and is just a guard dog. I've got a little alien wavy hand sticking out the floor. Then just my essential dinos. The Yankee for metal and flint. And the dodec for stone. Each argy has its own purpose. One for speed, one to carry a lot of items, and one for combat. The frogs to get paced, and there's three auto turrets in here. Two on that shelf, and one on the ground. A farm wood with a beaver. And the industrial forge is hidden away in the corner. The pterodons are used for speed travelling. I keep one spare as a backup. And a trough to feed everything. Keep all the spare fertiliser in a dodo as it's small and carries a lot more than the storage boxes. I'll give you another look around the hangar before we go into the main house. The delivery window still works, but this time it just goes to one box. You can unload or pick up items without having to open a side door. Main control panel and message board. Okay, so let's go in. This is still the main crafting area, but it's been changed around a bit. There's a lot more storage in two smithies, and the fabricator's been moved up here from downstairs. We've got mortars here at the moment, but I would remove a smithy on the left side with the storage boxes to place a chemistry table. We've already got them at other bases, so if it wasn't a rush to do it here. The water tap indicates that a pipe system down to the swamp is still intact. That system is connected to the industrial cooker. The bookcase here is to put all the spare blueprints in. We have one smithy to make weapons and armour, and the other to make building tiles. I now have lights which we didn't before when I was trying to hide. When this was a stealth base, the light would have gave its position away, but now I've gone all battle fortress mode, it doesn't matter. 
you can fit quite a lot in, in just a 2x3 area. Next we come to the door hub, which remains the same. In here we still have a vault strong room. Our best blueprints are stored there. The vault. A bed to spawn at. And a fridge to keep all the eggs in kibble. Through here we have another ladder going up. And this doorway is to allow access to the industrial forge. That way when the metal is turned into ingots, I can pick them up here and take them to the crafting room. I had to make do with a room we had available in the base, and it works well. Up the ladder we have the same storage chest. But this section's now been converted to a storage area. You can still snipe down from this window, but the other one's blocked unless you remove a box. Ok, still to go. The ladder going up, and the hatch going down. So let's finish the bottom first. We now have the industrial cooker. The eggs are secure in the vault room above, so I can just collect them, drop down and place them in the cooker. An auto turret to protect this room. The fridge is to store berries and meat. The grill for cooking, a couple of storage boxes and a preservation bin to make jerky. The air cons to keep me cool when cooking. And this storage room remains the same. I'll give you another look around. Oh, I almost forgot. In here we have a backup generator. There's now another one upstairs, just in case this one's taken out. This room takes us under the base to its foundations, but this time I'm going to show you all of them. We have the auto turret down here in the plant. The side skirts are to stop people getting under here. An extra bookshelf, where we keep spare blueprints to give away to new tribes. This is the back of the base, and it's as far back as you can get this side. What I didn't show you before was my little secret tunnel to the other side. You go down here, in front of us is that long narrow storage room. This is a way to the front of a base. I thought about storing the dung beetles down here, but it was too much of a pain to access them. The four crop plots are directly above us. Then, if we go this way, we get to the back of the base. And a secret entrance to allow me access to the rear. From here I can feed the plant, and resupply the auto turrets. I jump on them so you can see their range of fire. The two back middle turrets only can be resupplied with Quetzal at the moment. <laughs> if 
that's all the lower floors done. So let's make our way to the upper levels. The turrets are to stop people crawling under the base. That's a crafting room. So we take this second ladder up. This was a roof on the old design, so everything up from here is new. This is an unloading hangar for birds. This side we have a metal behemoth gates, and through here we have a front shaft for the birds to enter and exit. This was a later addition that was needed, because when we store quetzals on the roof, they block the birds exiting from the roof skylight, so we move them up and down from in here. I just close that. I'll get on a bird so you can see how we do it. So you just return into base and your bird's full of items. Just fly in and go up, then land and unload. Each floor is two walls high, but the dino gates are four high, so that gives us bird access for two floors. If a bird was carrying metal, we could put it in the industrial forge, plus this door lets us get metal out the forge for this level. You could land a couple of birds in here. This level was going to be another crafting area or large storage room and we could always put the chemistry table up here. The lower crafting area does us fine so there was no need to build up here yet. This was looking more like just to be a storage area. The bird's still on follow so I'll just sort this out. Yep, he's staying put. So here we have an internal room and I can look out the window to see who's coming up. But through this door, we go to the outer corridors. Where we can snipe down at the front. Having a double layered wall gives the building more strength in case one of them gets blown out. We can have lots of people shooting out the front at the same time. and the turrets for in case anyone gets in, and that covers both corridors. We can also shoot down the side, in case somebody tries to attack from the back. This is the back corridor. This is our teleporter room. Well basically, you put all your stuff in a storage box, and fast travel to where you want. We can also shoot out the back from here. People can also keep a spare set of equipment here in case we're raided, and we can just fast travel here from other bases. Through this door we have another vault, it's the same setup as a lower vault room. Another set of blueprints, and another refrigerator to hold extra eggs or kibble. Through here we have another access to the industrial forge, so we can take what we need out of it from either side. And this room is where we keep the main generator. 
I would have another generator on this floor, so that would give us two more backups. If you've seen my electrical power grid video, you'll know that both generators need to be on the same floor. That brings us back to the main room. And that's where the birds landed. In here we have a secure storage room, where I would keep more valuable stuff. Okay, that's this level done. And this is a front. I'm just making sure you get your bearings, as it's a bit of a maze in here. So, to get to the next level, we go through here. Then up a ladder. This takes us to our internal bird hangar. Here we keep our spare birds. Again we can snipe out all the windows. And we have the spare arches and terrors in case we lose any. And that's a front. So we can have people sniping on the levels below, plus this one. When we flew in, we gained access to the orange level below, by the way of the bottom part of the dino gate from the shaft. This is the top part of that same dino gate, which also gives us access to this level. so I could just get on the bird I want and fly it out of here. I don't have to use that door if I don't want to. Let's say we're being raided and all the black outer doors are closed. The raiders would have seen me fly in this door. It would have been easier if I just closed the outer one. Ok, so they saw me flying to the bottom main doorway, but with the outer doors closed what we don't see is me flying up to the roof hangar, so at a time of war I can move my birds up and down without them knowing. I'll finish showing you this level, then I'll tell you why that's important. Through this door we gain access to the top of the vault that's on the level below, so we can load or unload items there if we want. There's space here for quite a lot more birds. Ok, at the back we have another hangar door, and this one leads out to the roof. But the problem is it's blocked by a quetzal at the moment, and that's why we have to do the shaft going down to the ground floor. I'll just remove it. And now we can fly our birds in and out the top. So even if we're under siege, we can still get supplies in and move the birds through the base if I don't know where we're going to attack from. And as a last resort, we can load all the birds with equipment and escape the base. The birds go up and down on this shaft, but we gain access from the side. If people try and break in we can shoot them from here. We take the ladder up to the roof, and these are the corridors surrounding a quetzal nest. There's nothing here at the moment, but I suppose you could turn it into a storage area or a prison. When you've got two quetzals in, the wings can block the corridors, which is a downside. But you could land on a roof and then store everything in here. You could even make this a crafting area. This is a doorway to the nest. And that brings us out in the opening. 
where you can board or unload your Quetzals. That's one of our anti-battle Quetzal Quetzals. This is a Mark 1 version, which is okay, but a Mark 3 is unbeatable. To get onto the nest wall, you take this ladder. It gives you a good sniping position. I'll go around and show you the view from up here. The plants are to knock any dinos to the side that are being dropped on the roof. You could also place a lot of them here if you wanted. I'll try not to fall down. I've made the front and back of this area two tiles wide. That's so I could put multiple man turrets here if I wanted. I think I'll be able to get three man machine guns each side. That would look good and slaughter any attacking Quetzal. Okay, that's my base top to bottom. I'll fly around to give you one last look at it. I would have put a third tower down the right hand side, but instead we started work on a big structure, and we'll get to that next. From the bottom down here you could try and rocket it, but the auto turrets would destroy them before they reached anything. I've not put auto turrets on the outer towers yet, to make them an easier target to attack. I want raiders to attack them like Sons of Valhalla did, and waste all their time and resources on them. You want to predict and control the raiders' actions. If I put auto turrets on, they might try and bypass the main towers and go for the main house, which I don't want. And that's the main base finished. Now on to the new structure. Any idea what it's going to be? Apart from big? <laughs> our land to give you an idea of the sheer scale of it. My updated base was mostly done just by two people. However this, this would need a lot more. So I recruited some new tribe members and we started work. I wanted something big enough to keep all our dinosaurs in and be our main base. But I also wanted it to be so strong it was virtually unraidable. The outer walls would be triple thick, reinforced with horizontal support beams. So even though if the pillar struts were destroyed at a base, the horizontal ceiling towers above would still lock everything in place. After the pillar and horizontal struts were built, the out and inside would be covered with metal walls. They would bind together with the horizontal struts, giving you three levels of reinforcement. 
This corner section is complete and would carry on around the entire edge of a cube. This is an access tube for the defenders to fast travel around the base. It's big enough to fly around inside it with birds or defend the inside with smaller corners. You want to place your horizontal struts at the same height that you would have your internal rooms. This side opening would be a gateway for the Gigas to get through. It would be a defended tunnel going down to where they're kept. It wouldn't have a dino gate there. Instead, I'd opt for a gateway blocker built on the back of a penis horse. Just a bigger version of what I've got at my hill base. The only way you can get the top of this wall level is to build it with pillars. Then place the top ceiling tiles out as far as you can go. Then build the pillars down from the ceiling tile till it reaches the ground. This base wall needs to be the same height all the way around. So that means I need to build it up to here. Opposite my hill base, I'd have a metal behemoth gate here, and that'd be the entrance to the Quetzal hangar. My existing hill base then would become a defence tower, and help guard the entrance. This tower would have to be moved and redone. I would have one of these in each corner. You'll probably be able to get about 80 gigas in here. Any ideas what it's going to be yet? Well here's a big clue. This is the start of its first layer of a roof. The outside roof is going to be sloped. That's right, it's going to be a giant pyramid. Each level needs to be two ceiling tiles across. The outer wall needs to be of a slope, then the inside needs to be held up by a metal wall or gateway. I've chose gateways as this is only the outer shell of a base. There would be a large gap between this and the internal base, and that would have a lot of turrets on it. So by using gateways it's cheaper and raiders wouldn't have any walls to hide behind. I created a smaller example on a test server, and this will give you an idea of what it would look like. I've managed to do one corner on the available train. I think it will look quite good. I would put auto turrets down the corners, and because the roof is sloped, if I land on it, raiders have got nowhere to hide. From this you get a good idea of what it would look like. But the one on the official server will be about three times the size. And of course, that one would be perfectly squared off. The smaller cube in the middle is what I built originally. Then I extended the slope corner. I'll fly in so you can see what that small building looks like from the inside. That's a roof effect you'd get from underneath. It's a completely freestanding roof with no support structures. It looks really nice, but the downside is it costs about four times more than it would if it was a flat roof. But then again, with a one cell block structure it's about four times stronger. Our finished roof would be about ten times bigger than this. And that's what we had planned to put on his finished base. The height of a pyramid would be quite impressive. As the ground's uneven, you're always going to get gaps in the bottom of your wall. That can't really be helped, as the most important thing is to get the top of the wall even. Otherwise you won't be able to build a pyramid roof. You can always fill these gaps up with spike walls, or what I'd do is place an entire row of X plants at the base, and that'd stop anyone sneaking under the wall. Plus I'd have plants and auto turrets the other side as well, so if I did try and manage to sneak under, they'd just get slaughtered the other side. The main defence of a pyramid would be the defence towers in each corner. That's one of the reasons why I'm building a base here. I'd put all that work into my hill base, so when this was built, that'd just become a really strong defence tower. This would be the back of a pyramid. 
so I have arranged weapon ports to fight off any attack. These would open up in a raid and you'd have a man turret behind them. I would have two up there. The behemoth gate is to let our giggers out in a counter attack. And I'll have four weapon stations that side. Like my other base would have rows of X plants and pillar walls at the front. That would stop any giggers attacking. While those are being held at bay, we'd open these dino doors and man the gun turrets. And I'll show you that if I can land on this small ledge. These doors were at a perfect height to shoot raiding giggers in the head. The gun room would go back into the base another two squares, so all we have to do is open the doors and start firing forward. That's where the other door would go, it'd just be a bit higher, as you don't want raiders jumping into your base. And it's the same again on this side, but this time it's four guns. Each gun should be in its own contained room, so if any raider did manage to get in here, they won't be able to enter the base, and all the other man turrets can carry on firing. With six man turrets shooting out the back, we should be able to slaughter anything. To build the pyramid roof, each side has to be exactly the same size, as if it's not a perfect square, the roof's going to be off as well. And it all needs to be the same level, so we'd have to build the wall up to this height. You'd have the X-plants lined up against the base of a wall, and this is where the dino bollards would go. I'll give you a quick fly around so you can see everything from above. Well, that's my base. I hope it gave you some good ideas. And that's what we had planned for the pyramid. That's until the dev screwed us over and decided to change your map again. This area's been completely changed. So we have to take everything down, or it'll be completely wiped, and we'd lose everything. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> At least it'll live on forever in this video. In my next video, I'll be taking this base down layer by layer, so you'll get to see from the overhead view how it was built. It looks interesting that way, and it'll definitely help you to see how I built it. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe. You never know. I may be building this pyramid somewhere else, in a better position which we've already picked. Don't forget to check out your other videos at the end, and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye!